crazy facts about white women during the slave trade. In the 1800s, amidst the tumult of the transatlantic slave trade, white women occupied roles that often elude mainstream historical narratives. However, today, as we confront ongoing challenges of inequality and historical legacies, it's crucial to delve deeper into the complexities of their experiences. Buckle up for a journey into 12 crazy facts about white women during the slave trade. Number 1. Women as Slave Owners In the shadows of grand plantation houses, there lurked a reality often ignored the ownership of human lives. White women, sometimes portrayed as delicate and innocent, held the reins of power over enslaved individuals. They inherited this authority through bloodlines stained with the sweat and tears of those they deemed property. These women, with their dainty hands, signed documents that sealed the fate of generations. Their roles weren't merely passive. They were active participants in a system built on exploitation. They oversaw the grueling labor in fields under the scorching sun, their commands echoing like thunder in the silence of oppression. Some took pleasure in exerting their dominance, relishing in the control they wielded over human beings deemed inferior. Behind closed doors, the cruelty of punishment knew no bounds. Women, with cold determination, administered lashings and inflicted pain upon bodies already broken by toil. Their actions, justified by twisted ideologies of superiority, echoed through history's corridors, leaving scars on the collective memory of humanity. And when inheritance passed from one generation to the next, it wasn't just land and wealth, but also the ownership of lives. Enslaved individuals became chattel, traded and sold like commodities, their humanity reduced to mere entries in account books, forgotten by a society blinded by privilege and prejudice. Number two. Women in abolitionist movements. In Amidst the darkness of slavery, there were flickers of light voices raised against the injustice that stained the fabric of society. White women, some with hearts ablaze with empathy, stood on the front lines of abolitionist movements. They penned words that ignited flames of change, challenging the status quo with every stroke of their pens. Harriet Beecher Stowe a force to be reckoned with, wielded her novel Uncle Tom's Cabin like a weapon against the chains of bondage. Her words cut through ignorance, awakening hearts to the horrors endured by enslaved souls. Through literature, women like her became warriors, fighting with ink instead of swords. But not all women stood on the side of justice. Some, ensnared by the comforts of privilege, defended the indefensible. They clung to outdated beliefs weaving webs of excuses to justify the subjugation of their fellow human beings. Their voices, tainted by the poison of prejudice, echoed hollow arguments in defense of oppression. The dichotomy was stark a battlefield of ideologies where women fought for the soul of a nation. Their words and actions, intertwined with the threads of history, shaped the narrative of slavery's demise. In their struggles and triumphs, we find echoes of resilience and the enduring power of righteous indignation, Number three, white women's economic influence. Behind the opulent facades of mansions and estates, white women held the strings of economic power. Inheritance and marriage bestowed upon them wealth derived from the labor of enslaved individuals. They lounged in luxury, unaware or indifferent to the suffering that sustained their lifestyles. And their investments fueled industries that thrived on the backs of the oppressed. Plantations flourished under their watchful eyes, their profits dripping with the blood and sweat of enslaved laborers. Yet, in their privileged ignorance, they remained detached from the harsh realities of those they exploited. Enslaved individuals toiled under the watchful gaze of mistresses who counted their wealth in human lives. The comforts of fine linens and exquisite delicacies masked the brutality of a system built on dehumanization white women's economic influence, a silent force shaping the contours of society, perpetuated the cycle of exploitation and inequality. And when the abolitionist winds blew, stirring whispers of change, some women clung stubbornly to their fortunes. They resisted calls for emancipation, fearing the loss of their economic supremacy. Their reluctance to let go of privilege painted a stark picture of greed and indifference, highlighting the moral bankruptcy of a society built on exploitation. Number four, relationships and sexual exploitation. Amidst the chains of slavery, tangled webs of relationships wove a complex tapestry of power and desire. White women, with their status as mistresses of plantations, held sway over not just labor, but also intimacy. 
Some formed intimate bonds with enslaved men, blurring the lines of power and consent. In the shadows of moonlit nights, forbidden passions simmered beneath the surface of societal norms. Enslaved men, stripped of autonomy, navigated treacherous waters of affection and coercion. Their bodies, objectified and exploited, became battlegrounds of desire and domination. Children born of these forbidden unions inhabited a liminal space, straddling worlds defined by race and privilege. Their existence challenged rigid hierarchies, threatening the very foundations of a system built on racial purity. Yet, despite the risks, love and longing transcended boundaries, defying the shackles of oppression. But not all relationships were consensual. Enslaved women, vulnerable to the predatory whims of masters and mistresses, faced a harrowing reality of sexual exploitation. Their bodies, commodified and violated, bore the scars of systemic abuse inflicted in the name of power and control. Number 5. Legal Status and Property Rights Within the intricate web of legal frameworks, white women navigated a landscape shaped by privilege and entitlement. Their status conferred upon them rights unimaginable to those they enslaved. They wielded authority over lives and livelihoods, their decisions shaping destinies with a stroke of a pen. The legal apparatus, designed to uphold systems of oppression, granted white women property rights that extended to human beings. Enslaved individuals, reduced to assets on ledgers, were bought, sold, and bequeathed like inanimate objects. The law, a tool of subjugation, reinforced hierarchies of race and power. But legal nuances varied, influenced by social status and geographic location. Wealthy women wielded greater autonomy, their actions shielded by layers of privilege. Yet even among the affluent, disparities existed, reflecting the intricacies of a society divided by wealth and race. The legal status of enslaved individuals, juxtaposed against the freedoms enjoyed by white women, laid bare the stark inequalities embedded in the fabric of society. Justice, a distant dream for the oppressed, remained elusive in a world where laws upheld the tyranny of the privileged. Number 6. Education and Cultural Influence Amidst the tumult of slavery, white women shaped the contours of education and cultural narratives. Their roles as educators, albeit within constrained boundaries, influenced perceptions of race and hierarchy. They imparted knowledge that reinforced societal norms, molding minds to accept prevailing ideologies. In the hallowed halls of learning where ideas took root and blossomed, white women curated narratives that justified oppression. Their versions of history painted a picture of superiority, whitewashing the horrors endured by enslaved individuals. Education became a tool of indoctrination, perpetuating myths of racial hierarchy. Cultural influence extended beyond classrooms, permeating literature and art. White women as creators and consumers of culture propagated stereotypes that dehumanized the oppressed. Their portrayals shaped public perceptions, reinforcing biases that justified exploitation and subjugation. Yet, amidst the sea of conformity, whispers of dissent echoed through hidden channels. Some women, recognizing the power of knowledge, advocated for the education of enslaved individuals. They challenged conventions, albeit cautiously, recognizing the potential for change in enlightened minds. Number 7. Domestic Roles and Enslaved Labor Within the confines of domestic spaces, white women held sway over the lives of enslaved individuals who toiled under their watchful eyes. The domestic sphere, portrayed as a haven of comfort, masked the harsh realities of exploitation and oppression. Enslaved individuals, relegated to menial tasks within households, bore the brunt of mistresses' expectations. Their labor sustained the comforts enjoyed by white women, their efforts invisible in a narrative crafted to glorify domesticity. The kitchen became a battleground of survival, where power dynamics played out in mundane chores. But amidst the drudgery, Acts of resistance bloomed like fragile flowers in a harsh landscape. Enslaved individuals found moments of defiance, subtle gestures that spoke volumes of their resilience. Their labor, extracted under duress, carried echoes of resistance that challenged the notion of passive acceptance. White women, ensconced in their roles as mistresses, wielded authority with a mix of benevolence and cruelty. Their management of enslaved laborers mirrored societal norms perpetuating systems of control within the intimate confines of home. 
The domestic realm, a microcosm of larger power structures, bore witness to the complexities of oppression and resistance. Number 8. Intersectionality and Identity Formation In the crucible of slavery, white women's identities were forged by intersecting forces of race, gender and class. Their roles as mothers, wives and community members intersected with their positions in relation to enslaved individuals, shaping perceptions and identities in nuanced ways. For affluent white women, privilege shielded them from the harsh realities endured by the oppressed. Their identities, defined by wealth and social status, existed in stark contrast to the marginalized communities they exploited. Yet, even within privileged circles, nuances of identity emerged, influenced by familial legacies and societal expectations. While working-class white women navigated different paths, their identities shaped by economic struggles and limited opportunities. Their interactions with enslaved individuals often blurred lines of power, creating complex dynamics rooted in shared experiences of oppression. Intersectionality revealed the intricacies of identity formation, highlighting the diverse experiences and perspectives of white women during the slave trade era. Number 9. Religious and Moral Justifications In the sanctuaries of faith, white women sought solace and justification for systems of oppression. Religious beliefs intertwined with societal norms provided moral cover for the exploitation of enslaved individuals. Some women, with fervent conviction, viewed slavery as a divine institution ordained by higher powers. Moral arguments echoed through sermons and teachings, shaping perceptions of righteousness and justice. White women, as proponents of religious doctrines, wove narratives that justified subjugation under the guise of paternalistic care. Their interpretations of scriptures became tools of oppression, reinforcing hierarchies of power and privilege. Yet, amidst the echoes of conformity, dissenting voices emerged. Some women challenged prevailing ideologies, recognizing the inherent contradictions between faith and oppression. They questioned moral justifications, advocating for empathy and compassion towards the oppressed. Number 10. Resistance and Support Networks In the shadows of oppression, networks of resistance and support intertwined in a delicate dance. White women, some driven by conscience, participated in clandestine efforts to undermine systems of slavery. They risked their safety and privilege to aid enslaved individuals seeking freedom. Underground railroad activities, shrouded in secrecy, involved women who defied societal norms to assist in escape routes to freedom. Their actions, fueled by empathy and solidarity, challenged the status quo and offered hope to the oppressed. Yet, for every act of resistance, there were those who supported the status quo. Some white women, entrenched in privilege and prejudice, actively supported pro-slavery organizations and ideologies. They wielded their influence to maintain systems of oppression, perpetuating cycles of exploitation and dehumanization. Their complicity echoed through history, a stark reminder of the complexities of moral agency. The dichotomy of resistance and support illuminated the moral landscape of a nation grappling with its conscience. White women, in their varied roles, became agents of change or defenders of injustice, shaping the course of history through their actions and alliances. Number 11. Legal Advocacy and Reform Efforts In courtrooms and legislative chambers, white women engaged in legal advocacy and reform efforts to challenge the institution of slavery. Some, driven by a sense of justice, fought for the rights of the oppressed through legal battles and activism. Women like Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, pioneers of women's rights and abolition, navigated intersecting struggles for justice. Their advocacy spanned realms of gender equality and racial emancipation, challenging entrenched systems of oppression. The legal battles for the freedom of enslaved individuals often centered on women as plaintiffs or witnesses, highlighting their roles in shaping legal narratives. The courtroom became a battleground for justice, where women's voices echoed with conviction and determination. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, then you're going to love this one. Click the video on the screen right now and take a look. And as always, thanks for watching.